from California or something. And I for just sure. thought, okay, this is too sweet for me. Yeah. So, so when you talk about it being in Europe as in dry, have mm. they been doing rosés for many, many years? Yeah, a, a long time. And again, we I brought in something from Provence because if, if you go there and we should all go there, we should do our next show in Provence yeah, actually. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, this is kind of what everyone drinks. And, and again, it, there's this, I've said this before probably on the radio, there's this cruel irony in the wine world that in warm climates, that's suited to red grapes. And people, when they're in a hot place, they don't feel like drinking thick, warm red. They want something light and refreshing. Right. So in parts of the world like that, they've just turned those red grapes into a night, light, crit crisp rosé mm-hmm. that's dry. Uh, it suits the the European palate. We kind of have a sweet palate here in North America, but also goes with their food. You know, it goes with their shellfish and, and things coming off the grill. Remind our listeners that rosé is not just mixing red and white wine. Yeah, what's and, the process? Yeah, and, and you know what? You can do that. Oh, if you, you can? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and for some wines, they do. But the majority of, of rosé is made uh, just like red wine. You need uh, that color from the skin. So mm-hmm. you marinate the grape juice on those red grape skins uh, to get your red wine to make rosé. You just do it for a little less time, days instead of weeks, so to speak. Uh, I do like it. Let's see here. I'm just going to take a little sim- sample here. And, and I think back to the idea of you, you'd like a red, but if you're in a warm climate, r- reds are almost too warm. It, so you yeah. want to still have a bit of that flavor of a red wine flavor. with the yeah. cri- crispness and freshness. Exactly. And some of the body and you're still maybe going to have, you know, a piece of meat for dinner and you want something that can stand up to it. It's a little more robust than a white wine. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so, and again, and some people just don't want white. It's in their head uh, that they just hate white wine. Right. Rosé is a nice go-between. Um, and I think another thing that's, you know, I, I kind of applaud the, the men in our market. They've gotten all over the macho thing with pink wine. Uh, they've realized, oh yeah, I can drink this. It's socially acceptable. People aren't going to think I'm wimpy for doing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it used to be just a woman's drink, but the whole market has caught on really. Huh. All right. So as I uh, swirl it around my glass here, Huh. What are some of the flavors I should be smelling here? I get in a lot of rosés like this, which is on the lighter side, I get a lot of like blood orange or tangerine, Mm -hmm. Um, not red fruits, but it's not like, you know, that kind of lemon lime citrus. There's, there's a bit more flavor, uh, a little more sweeter fruit flavors like that. But it's, again, you're, you're getting that crisp tangy. Uh, Sometimes, you know, you might get some, some peach or mango, but for me, this is a lot of like blood orange and tangerine and, uh, kind of zippy fruit flavors that, and I think just too easy to drink. So wine connoisseurs don't turn their nose up. I mean, the Côte de Provence, they are all all okay with having rosés. Yeah, I- I- exactly. And it's something that uh, I think we're just seeing as one of our biggest growth uh, categories in our stores. Uh, it used to be rosé only in the summertime. We couldn't keep them in stock this winter time in Alberta, really? which is, which is odd. You're right. It's a beautiful weekend coming up and it was a beautiful long weekend. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you guys were crazy. Yeah, busy. we were, we were nuts. We were all hands on deck at the store. A lot of beer, a lot of whites, a lot of rosé. But uh, people would even drink rosés in the winter. Yeah. And I think it's just something where uh, people, it's one of those drinks. It's not too complicated. Rosé isn't something you're going to wax poetically about. Let's, let's just say at the end of a long week, you want to turn the brain off and just have something that's really delicious. You know, there's a phrase that's becoming absurdly popular called like a patio pounder type of wine. That's what this wine is. Uh, the bottle disappears too quickly. Probably if you can find a 1.5 liter Magnum, that's probably the oh. appropriate size because uh, it is just really crushable and delicious. And again, like I said, almost too easy to I to sometimes imbibe with. turn my brain off on Wednesdays. I don't <laughs> wait till Friday. Um, you also have a couple of uh, programs coming up where people can learn more about rosés and in- sample them if they haven't done this in the past. Absolutely. Always lots of tastings going on at our tasting centers. We do have a rosé taste coming up at Oak Ridge on May 25th. I think there's still tickets for those and still a couple tickets uh, left at our Midtown store for June 14th. So if you want to taste a bunch of rosés, there'll probably be even some sparkling ones as well. Uh, we can get you all cut up to date on, on rosés in our market and, and trying a bunch of different styles. Like it, Eric. Uh, thanks again for bringing in the, you're saying reflet? Yeah, reflet. You don't pronounce the T at the end. Okay, uh, that's of course, silent. because it's from France. From France. Reflet. And if you want, check out our Facebook page later on today. If you want to see the label, thanks so much for bringing it in. Always my pleasure. Eric Southward, Somalia, Crowfoot, Co-op, Wine, Spirit, Spear. It's 417. Let's check that drive home.